Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about some items that I just purchased recently. It's the Electrosonics CR185 receiver and the Electrosonics M185 transceiver or transmitter belt pack lavalier system. I've been getting more into my hobby of location sound recording. I do have some other recorders and mixers. I have another 302 mixer and a 740T audio recorder. But for this bag that I'm putting together is going to be a sort of more of a music recording bag for my compositions. So I have a Zoom H6 recorder. It's a six input, six track recorder. And I have a 442 mixer from Sound Devices and a 302 mixer from Sound Devices. So what we're talking about though today is the wireless recording systems. And the reason why I want to want to talk about wireless recording systems is that it kind of relates to another hobby of mine which is ham radio and I haven't seen any videos on these old Electrosonics transceivers uh, I see them on eBay a lot but I don't see any real videos about anybody using them uh, I, I don't know if they're considered professional anymore or people just don't like them but so far in my uses they've been working out pretty well uh, this particular model runs on 197.125 so these are single frequency comm systems or recording lavalier wireless lav systems and they run on 9 volt batteries and they can also run on these 8.4 volt lithium ion batteries which is what I'm using right now it's this eBell brand in them and they've been running for about give or so take about 45 minutes or so so they've been running on these batteries and it seems like everything's pretty good so far I bought this pair for about $106 on eBay. What it came with was this Tram TR50 mic that's connected and I'm using right now. It came with the the belt pack and the receiver and the antenna. It, it was missing a screw here in the belt clip, so I had to replace that and it works fine now. So the way this is working is you're receiving a signal from the microphone here. It goes into the transmitter. The transmitter has some compressor and limiters in it and gain staging you can do it comes out from the transmitter which is basically using this wireless lav wire as a as an antenna system and it's being sent to this receiver here and then the receiver is taking the signal and putting it into the mixer the mixer is going out into the recorder the recorder is recording locally onto the recorder itself and then it's outputting from the line out into the Panasonic GH2 that I'm filming with right now and I'm going to use the audio from the Zoom H6 just for reference because I usually don't do that because I'm lazy when it comes to my editing. So that's something you don't want to do. You always want to use the best audio sources that you can when making videos. But going back to this, these are interesting to me because this has some characteristics on it which are kind of interesting from a radio perspective. Uh, it has a shunt uh, type of com compression system in it. Let me bring up the... Uh, the uh, manual here and go over that. So it, it's basically an input compressor, which is shunt FET compressor. It's got a mic preamp in there, which is a NE5534 type op amp. And then it's got a capander in there. And what's cool about the capander is that it takes the signal from a two down to a one, it sends it out into the receiver. The receiver then puts it through a series of different IF filtration and other processes. Then it gets to one of the last stages, which is takes that one signal and converts it back to a two. So it compresses and then uncompresses, companding. These work very well together in sync. They're designed like that on purpose. They won't work with other models from what I understand. One, because the uh, frequency is set for this pair only. Now, if you have another transceiver on the same frequency, it probably would work with that. But I digress. The receiver here is pretty interesting because it has some interesting narrow passband filtration systems in it to reject any kind of intramod and other type of signals uh, around or on the frequency that it's listed at. Now I'm standing up again and uh, the way that these work is when you have it on mute here you want to from off to mute first so it kind of levels the voltages out then you want to set your dial so that this lamp is at least lighting up and sometimes if you set it to where it kind of tickles the limiter that can be okay in some cases and they do say that in the manual 
typically what I found for the Tram TR50 on me, my current mic placement on my body, that this is kind of an okay area. I'm still learning how to dial it in though, but that's learning how to set your gain stage, right? And then over here, you want to have it so that you can see this modulation LEDs lighting up. You want at least to have that to light up. And you can also tickle the 0 dB LED, although I, I haven't been able to do that with my model on here. I suppose it could be the microphone I'm using or it could be that the LED is bad. Regardless though, the, uh, the LED is supposed to be lighting up a little bit if you want to really maximize the amount of uh, signal to noise ratio. I find that this is more than adequate for my setup right now and I'm constantly tweaking it. And you also have the output here too as well to change a little bit to kind of increase that. Play around with it. You have your power LED here and you get an RF LED. So the RF LED is important because once you're on the mute part and you're kind of setting everything up, you can tell if it's setting out RF. If, if it's not, that won't light up. Now what's interesting about the M185 Lars model from what I read in the uh, manual is that it doesn't have an actual antenna, an external disconnectable antenna. What it does is it takes the microphone cable and uses that as its antenna and it forms sort of a, a dipole according to the manual with the ground plane of the body pack. So I suppose that works. I'm not sh I, I can only imagine what the polarization pattern looks like with this antenna system on here for VHFs especially, but it, it seems like it's working. And I want to go out and kind of like walk around and record. Okay, we're outside the front yard here. Just walking around about 15 feet away. I'm on the Note 9 filming outside. You can probably see the uh, camera footage running in the inside there. Just seeing how the everything lines up. I don't have a windscreen on the Tram TR50 though, which probably would have been a good idea. Probably getting a lot of wind noise in here. And uh, we're about 30 feet away. Let's take a little stroll in the cold yard. Test out the noise. Still about a good 25 feet away, maybe 30 feet away. Okay, nearing the edge of the property here, about 45 feet away. Coming up to the small creek on the property. You can probably hear the uh, water in the creek. And we'll head back. Okay, we're back. And uh, that was an interesting test. So, seems like hopefully it worked out okay. I'm going to find out when I edit the video. But uh, I thought I'd just do a little video on the Electrosonics CR185. I'm going to put links to the manual on this and the uh, belt pack transceiver. I'm going to take it off here. And uh, fortunately, my Tram TR50 didn't come with a windscreen, so it probably didn't uh, sound too good outside in the snow and the wind, but uh, we'll see. So definitely interesting piece of gear from a ham radio perspective. But uh, that's all I got to say about the Electrosonic CR185 and the M185 transmitter. Thanks for watching.